It was late at night on a typical Tuesday evening. I was surfing the internet as I had two large coffees from my local coffee shop earlier that day, and was unable to sleep. After watching pointless YouTube video after YouTube video, I came across a strange title in the related videos bar. None of the characters were of the English language. However, the shapes of the characters seemed to resemble words, although I couldn't quite decipher them. Curious, I clicked the video. I suddenly began to hear various creaks and groans coming from my house. I whirled around and grabbed a nearby baseball bat, ready for a fatal battle. To my surprise, there were no intruders in the house, nor any signs of a forced entry. All the doors were also locked. Figuring I was just going crazy, I shrugged my shoulders and lazily walked back into my room. I had spent a lot of money on a high bandwidth connection, so I was perplexed that the video I had clicked on had not loaded yet. I impatiently clicked on the video four more times in an attempt to bring it up. After what seemed like an eternity of waiting, the page finally loaded. The background was black, and it completely hid all of the text, except for the username of the uploader and the description, both in crimson red. The username of the uploader was Nightmare Slumber, and the description read as such, how ignorant of you. You are unaware of my demonic presence in your life. I will destroy everything you stand for. Worthless coward. I am always watching you. And soon, you will come to live with me. Forever. Figuring this was simply the idiocy of a 12 year old, I did not heed the danger I was in. The video began with a picture of an abandoned mental asylum later found out to be Dimby Asylum. The picture was a long, dark, and tattered corridor extending past the viewer's visual field. The left wall of the corridor had windows separated by columns. The corridor was bathed in an eerie moonlight, only broken by the shadows of the columns. The darkness of the corridor was a pure black, the likes of which I had never seen. I got the vibe that the asylum was hastily abandoned and never cleaned up. For the first minute of the video, it was simply a still frame of the corridor. There was no sound nor movement. At approximately 1 minute 13 seconds of the video, I noticed a slow but definite movement at the very end of the corridor. It had a human stance, but walked very unusually, most noticeably with its head pointed straight at the ground. The creature accelerated steadily as the video progressed eventually breaking into a full run. The creature ran headfirst into the camera, knocking it over. Simultaneously, I heard a very loud bang at the door. There was only one, and it sounded like someone had just run into the door. I jumped up and grabbed the bat again. When I heard my computer make an error sound, the computer then blue screened at that point, saying it shut down for safety reasons. The screen then proceeded to make note of the fact that an unknown hacker had been obtaining information about my whereabouts. My antivirus program ran a trace of the hacker's IP address. It came back with a city in northern Wales. The hack had been made from an abandoned mental asylum. Then the power went out. At this point, I became extremely intimidated. My eyes swelled up with water as my breath accelerated. I began to hear someone groaning in pain outside my door. I knew it was a mistake to go look, but I decided to go anyway. When I glanced through the people, there was nobody outside the door. I could still hear the groaning though. No way in hell was I opening the door. I flew into a panic attack and immediately attempted to contact police. I simply got a busy tone on both the landline and my cell phone. I ran back to my computer to see if I could hook it up to a generator and asked for help that way, when I noticed that the computer screen was still on. In a giant red text upon a black screen, it read, Go. To. Sleep. A piercing scream then rang out. It sounded like someone was dying. I raced to the kitchen and drew two knives out of a drawer. This was real. This was actually happening. The screams got louder and more desperate. Under the screams, I began to hear a faint but distinct hysterical laughter. I ran about the house trying to figure out what was going on. I then heard a sobbing coming from my closet in my computer room. 
My skin ran cold as I grasped the doorknob. It was cold to the touch. I should have said something before opening the door, but I didn't have the common sense to. I whipped the door open to see a young girl, dead and bloody, crumpled in a heap in my closet. Her stomach had been ripped open and her entrails pulled out. She was entirely naked and coated completely in blood. The wall suddenly illuminated with red light. I noticed that something was written in blood on the wall. You should have heeded the warning. Time to go to sleep. I whirled around and saw the figure in the video, head down and everything. I froze in fear. With one sudden movement, almost as if watching a video that had skipped a few frames, the figure twisted its head and looked at me. Then everything went black. Detective's note. The victim's body was found in a similar state to that of the young girl in the closet. Despite numerous blood tests, we cannot identify the girl. In fact, due to the lack of a missing persons report, the fact that no one came forward to claim her remains, or to try to solve the case of the murder, because no blood tests matched anyone we tested, it seemed like the girl never really existed. We have confirmed that the hacking came from an abandoned mental hospital. However, there was no explanation as to how this was timed so close together. We have issued an arrest warrant, but no officer wants to enter the ruins in fear of his or her life. The only break we got was a witness sighting of an extremely unusual and frightening creature running into a hotel a few days later. From the witness's testimony, we noticed a shocking similarity between the face of the deranged mental hospital inhabitant and the following image, taken from a site filled with horror stories with the words, go to sleep, captioned above it. Numerous murders like this have occurred since, and every single one of the victims has been noted to watch the video a few minutes before the homicide is committed. YouTube officials have tried to remove the video. However, every moderator that tries ends up getting brutally murdered. The case is still unsolved. Detectives note 2. After further researching the case, a few discoveries have been made. First, while I've been unable to find the source of the video, last-minute accounts of the killer's victims have provided enough descriptive evidence to point to the image used as the background for the video. But this is a JPEG image, and thus, by nature, is a still image. Rumor has it that, if you stare into the picture long enough, the image begins to twist and contort. Continue staring, and you can see a creature beginning to run towards the camera. No one has watched the image long enough to see the creature come close, but enough visual evidence is there to assume that it is the same person seen in the video. The image can be found below, and view at your own risk, for your life may be at stake. In addition, I have been searching for more information regarding the killer. To my horror, I found a set of stories online regarding one Jeff the Killer. The stories dictate a serial killer who develops his psychopathic tendencies at the onset of his teenage years, eventually killing everyone and his immediate family. The most shocking aspect of the story is that Jeff killed his victims in the same brutal way as seen in the Didby Asylum, even going to the extent of both killers communicating go to sleep before murdering their victims. The most frightening aspect, however, is that the image provided for Jeff the Killer is the exact same as the image provided by the witnesses for the Denby Asylum Killer, leading investigators to believe that they are in fact the same person. For further reading, simply search Jeff the Killer online. The most terrifying fact of all, though, lies in my personal experience. After recording this report, I heard strange sounds throughout my home. Figuring it was nothing, I continued doing research on Jeff. The banging noises got louder and louder. I searched outside, thinking maybe a bird was injured. As I stepped to my door, however, I noticed a movement in the window. I immediately attempted to phone police, but got a busy signal. Concerned, I put the phone down and looked towards the door, only to see Jeff staring directly at me with those cold, dead eyes and that horrific, disfigured face. His smile was the most eerie thing I've ever seen. I immediately pulled out my gun and began shooting. Jeff took off into the night. I know I am in danger, so I have set up constant surveillance around my home to protect myself. I still see the bright flashes of light 
and hear banging noises around my house, along with the rare but still horrifying laughter of which only a true psychotic serial killer can provide. I don't know how much longer it will be until we catch him, but if he keeps making these mistakes, then we'll have a solid identity and an airtight case. I feel we are on the brink of taking him in, for I keep hearing laughter and banging sounds that are escalating in volume. I'm also seeing an odd orb of light in the distance. I've radioed fellow police to the scene, but the radio has gone dead. The light is getting closer, and I have my gun ready. It's him. I can see his face. Time to- <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I don't like that the story is being uploaded, but oh well. It's not like any of you could catch a demon of my caliber. The detective is now dead. This journal is over. And it's quite hilarious, because in reviewing this document, I have logged every single one of your IP addresses. I know exactly where you are. Kayla Rogers, I'm coming for you next. You aren't safe. <laughs> I think it's time for you to go to sleep. I'll be there shortly. Sincerely, Jeff the Killer. Yes, I enjoyed watching the decapitated head of the detective roll around on the keyboard. It typed very... unique words. 